welcome back to Punk Torah TV. I'm so glad to be doing this vlog again. It's been a very long time, and I just have so many things I want to talk about. Last year, I was diagnosed with transverse myelitis. It's basically like multiple sclerosis, but without the publicity. Uh, without getting super technical, uh, your immune system attacks your spine. It actually attacks what's called the myelin sheath uh, around your nerves. And... Um, Basically, if you think of your nervous system as a series of wires that have plastic coating around them, you know, like when you do uh, little experiments when you're a kid with batteries and stuff like that, I'm assuming, of course, that everyone does that, um, it's the plastic that's around the wire. Uh, that's the myelin sheath. And so your immune system is basically like a rat that chews away the plastic and phrase the electrical wiring, and then uh, unfortunately what happens is that the signals get all messed up. Um, and that's basically what these inflammation disorders are. It's what MS basically is, and it's what transverse myelitis basically is. So I was diagnosed with that last December, and uh, as a Jewish spiritual leader, um, and as a patient with a chronic illness, I've learned a few things that I kind of like to share. Number one, it's okay to feel bad. You have earned the right to have really, really crummy days. Uh, in my case, it's when one side of my body is hot, the other side is freezing cold, and getting in the shower hurts. Um, now, those days aren't every day. I'm lucky. Um, but when they do happen, regardless of what your particular illness happens to be, you have the right to call a timeout on life and to basically blob out in front of Netflix. You have earned that. Um, when that happens, I would highly recommend you read a book called When Bad Things Happen to Good People by Rabbi Harold Kushner. Um, his book is basically a cliche at this point, and I can already hear people saying, really, Patrick, that book is every hospital chaplain's dream. They hand those things out like, you know, candy. Um, but the reality is that uh, it's a great book, and it will help you get some perspective on your pain. And, um, hey, you know, not everything has to be super original all the time. If it works, it works. Number two. Earn your good days. There's a natural drive, I think, in all living creatures uh, that we want to earn our keep in the world. And scientists have even discovered this in dogs. If you look at dogs and they are given an option of either earning a treat or being just given a treat, they will actually favor earning them. I think that this is just an instinct that's built into our DNA or whatever you want to say. Um, this may sound really crass, but I think that it helps us to earn our good days. We have our bad days, we suffer through them, but I think we should earn our good days. If you're having a good day, then do something good for someone else. Um, give a little charity to one of your friends who pests you on Facebook, um, saying that you should donate to their worthy cause. Uh, take time to sit with someone who's in worse shape than you. Um, a little shameless plug... If you are having a good day, but you really can't leave the house, you can always volunteer for one shul. You can broadcast right from your bedroom if you want to. You can lead a Torah study or lead a service. We'll teach you how to do it. Now, this isn't quid pro quo, and by that I mean you can't start your day by doing something good and then expect that God is going to magically make everything better for you. But in the spirit of gratitude, I think everyone should take a moment to recognize that they have the ability to make a good day a great day, and even better, to make a good day a great day for someone else. Another important point, low information dieting. Now, this was probably the smartest thing that I ever did when I got sick. I actually learned this from a lifestyle design blogger named Tim Ferriss. He wrote a book called The 4-Hour Workweek, and he has a whole series of these 4-Hour Cookbooks, 4-Hour Body, etc., etc. I took a serious inventory of the number of blogs, newspapers, social media sites, and TV shows that I was basically binging on, and I stopped. I tried to get off Facebook, but sadly it didn't work out. Um, basically, uh, people kept wanting to get in touch with me. They wanted to talk about Punctura stuff, whatever the case may be. And I, I tried to orient everyone towards a different uh, way of communicating with me. But people are so used to hitting me up on Facebook that the whole thing just collapsed uh, after a week. Um, so I ended up having to go back on it. I wish I didn't have to, but it's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles. But... Uh, 
One thing that I think is really valuable is just to cut down on the amount of time that you spend snacking on information. Limit the amount of time you watch TV. Limit the amount of time that you spend on the internet, if possible. Now, if it's your job to be online, if you work a computer job, something like that, then by all means, do what you got to do for your living. But you know what? When you clock out, really clock out. Some of the happiest people I know are people who have no idea what's going on. And another thing, don't research your illness on the internet. I know that message boards about amazing discoveries coming out in countries that we're not even familiar with uh, are tough to pass on, right? We're looking for hope anywhere we can. And there's also, I think, this drive within us to think that our doctors are dumb and that certainly they don't know everything that's going on. And so we need to do uh, the research for them. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be educated about your illness, but the reality is I think it's a lot easier to just find a good doctor and stick with uh, that person and to hope that they are really up on the latest treatments and things like that than it is to go researching for every alternative therapy, uh, you know, every weird place you can go to, every clinic, et cetera, et cetera. You know, find a good doctor and stick with that person. And uh, if that doctor's not working out, find another doctor. But don't go on WebMD and all of these other things and drive yourself insane. It's not worth it. Now, the one exception to the low information diet, so this would be rule number four, is to join an online support group. Now, ideally, you'd also find a local physical support group, but that's not possible for all of us. With the example of my illness, transverse myelitis, um, there isn't, you know, a transverse myelitis support group on every corner. Uh, so I found one that was online, and surprisingly, there are a lot of online support groups for all different types of um, issues and illnesses and things like that. So uh, join one. It's incredible. Uh, it's the only social media thing that I added uh, to my uh, information diet when I got sick. Uh, there are plenty of them out there. Find one and stick with it. You'll have terrific community. Which, by the way, I would like to hope that the Punk Torah, One Shul, and Darshan Yeshiva community uh, can be communities for you if you're sick. So please go online, comment on this post, comment on YouTube. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know if there's anything we can do to help you out. I'm Rabbi Patrick. Thanks for watching Punk Torah TV.